Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, um, Lockdown Tech Toys, and thank you for subscribing. Um, those of you who have subscribed, thanks for subscribing, and thanks for liking my previous videos. Today I'm going to talk about the um, Ronin SC, the DJI Ronin, Ronin SC, right here. Last week I unboxed it, um, and I was pretty excited to try it, but I didn't have the chance over the weekend. I was so busy. So today is Monday, and um, I was able to bring it out for some test shoots. Um, on Saturday morning, I did, uh, you know, put myself through the paces of assembling it and uh, get to know how to balance it. That was not really fun, and I don't think it's worth your time. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't make any video about that. So, today I just brought it out for, for a quick walk around. Um, and uh, these are the things that I have in my backpack. I brought in my backpack. So you can see that it's quite a lot. I got my... Um, A6400, I got my Sony shooting grip that I will bring out later, and yeah, actually I'll bring it out right now, the shooting grip, right? I brought it out because I wanted to do a comparison between, you know, shooting handheld and shooting with a gimbal. The other reason why I brought this out is because this is uh, fully remote, so pushing, you know, photo or movie will automatically trigger the camera, whereas this one, uh, this Ronin SC, requires you to have um, a cable connection yeah, through this port over here, a, a USB-C port to the camera's micro USB port over here. So it sticks out and it's, uh, sorry, over here. It sticks out and it's pretty ugly in my opinion. Yeah, so I sometimes use this only as a remote, even without the camera attached to it. And then I brought my 10 to 18 millimeter lens that I didn't use because I really wanted to test the 50 millimeter and how it performs on a gimbal. Usually, you know, the longer the um, the lens is, the harder it is to stabilize. So I wanted to give it a hard test. And this is the grip, obviously, that has the battery inside. The battery connections are over here. Um, I bought the uh, the feet, right? Very handy, both as a grip when it's closed and obviously as um, a stand for when it's open. And I also got the uh, mounting plate you know, where you screw it on. This by, by far is the worst mounting plate I have seen um, or I can imagine can expect a gimbal to have simply because of this screw here. This screw requires a screwdriver. You can't screw it on with your fingers so you're forced to bring a screwdriver that isn't in the box. How crazy is that? Right, and, and how, when you're traveling or when you're going outside, how convenient is it for you to bring a screwdriver with you just to, just to fix the mounting plate to the bottom of the camera? Because if you want to use a camera with another tripod or like this shooting grip, you're not going to be able to do it without removing the mounting plate. So whenever you attach or detach um, this mounting plate, you need a screwdriver. Just remember that. Uh, the, the other gimbal, the, the, the Jillian Crane M2 I got, wasn't powerful, but at least you could you could you know screw it and screw it with your hand with your fingers. So that is a major uh, flaw in my opinion. The other flaw um, of this, as I mentioned, is the connection, the wire connection between this and the camera. Um, the Jillian Crane M2 wasn't powerful; it didn't have enough clearance for a camera this big. I mean, this small or this big. But anyway, that was too small. But at least it had a Bluetooth connection. This one doesn't. So. The only two flaws are those two, in my opinion. Um, yeah, and then I got these parts right here. So this, I figured out what this is for. This is for the lens, for the lens cap. Uh, no, for the lens itself. So it kind of supports the lens. If you put it, if you put it uh, to the mounting cap, you can see that it kind of supports the lens right here. Maybe I should move this up a little bit so you can see it more clearly. So there is a there is a spot here for you to attach it, and you screw it on. This screw can be screwed with your fingers. So I don't understand why they did it. This screw right here can be screwed and unscrewed with your fingers, and it goes into this portion here. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm right-handed, so. Yeah, it goes it goes into this portion right here. So this part holds the lens up when you 
when you put the lens on it, you take out you, you take out the hood, of course, and it supports the lens. Right? Why did, why couldn't have they have done that for the screw at the bottom? I'm not sure. Um, and the other thing I got, I brought along with me was this Sony mic. It's very useful because, especially if you're outdoors, you're shooting outside, you want something that's light and um, something that's easy to use. You just plug it into the side of the camera like so, like this. The port is here and it goes in. Um, there's another wireless microphone uh, from Sony, but that is um, 10 times the price. Yeah, so I did not bother getting that. Um, so yeah, so these are the stuff that I brought. And right now I'm gonna, uh, I, took, I took the videos already, I'm back home. I'm gonna show you what they look like. So enjoy. All right, what is going on YouTube? Right, I am here right now on a weekday night and um, I'm right outside the Marina Bay Sands. Uh, there seems to become some kind of construction or renewal work going on here, and this is a test. This is a test of the uh, gimbal I got just a couple of days ago. Um, this is the DJI Ronin SC, and I'm giving it the ultimate test, the test of the 55 millimeter lens at night fixed to my Sony A6400. And um, yeah, this is a very good lens, but actually it's a portrait lens, so it's not meant to be filming like landscape scenery. However, I thought it would be good to give this gimbal uh, a test, yeah, at night. So my plan is to walk to the Helix Bridge and see how much shaking there is uh, effectively. Obviously I know this one can easily handle the A6400 but given that this is 50 um, millimeter on an APS-C sensor uh, let's see how it turns out you know how it, how it looks on your computer or in a TV screen because from what I'm seeing it looks just fine to me with minimal shape uh, it's stabilized I see a lot of people jogging around um, at night, yeah, so, okay, let's see what's going on, mm, yeah, very fit and tough guy there, I would like to jog here, but, I have jogged here before, all the way here, but jogging back gets me really tired, so, yeah, I gotta make sure that I don't, like, give up halfway, because, yeah, I can't afford to, um, I think people who live around here, Actually, no one lives nearby except hotels, so yeah, sorry, there's no one who lives nearby except if you live in a hotel and you're super ultra rich or a penthouse suite somewhere around the Marina Bay area uh, here in Singapore, you're not going to find people. yeah houses or apartments here. Oh, dang, this place is closed off to the public, so yeah, I need to take the long route around this. Place. There's Marina Square. Oh, one of the benefits of a 50 millimeter lens is that even faraway objects appear near. So you can see the stuff that's going on over there. You see a completely different uh, perspective. And my goal is to walk across over there uh, to the Helix Bridge. Uh, like I mentioned just now, this bridge right here. Yeah, now it's in focus. So. Yeah, I'm just uh, trying to do that. Yep. Nice breezy night, not too humid, uh, as is sadly the case often in Singapore. Even at night, it gets humid. So um, there's a Mandarin Oriental right there. And I'm going uh, to this part of the sidewalk, and uh, yep. Going over, that's Raffle City. It's a big green bus passing by. Um, yeah, it's very nice. It's time to go out right now. Um, okay, so I drove here. There's this electric vehicle called the uh, 
called the Blue SG car. Electric car is very cheap. It got me here in 15 minutes. Actually, less than that, like 12 minutes, for only five dollars and forty cents. And that's Singapore dollars. In USD, it's about three fifty. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty good. Uh, now I'm just gonna cut out for a while, and uh, I'm gonna start re-recording the big bus once I get to the bridge. Oh yeah, wait, um, this I forgot this uh, record button doesn't work. I actually need to link this to my shooting grip, my Sony shooting grip, in order to... Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. can't see it here. But anyway. Okay, so here I am at the Youth Olympic Park. This was the initial place I wanted to get to, but since the, uh, the car needs to be parked at the nearby Esplanade, I had to walk over. It's a, it's a short three minute walk. But it took me so long because I was setting up this gimbal for the second time. Yeah. Lots of joggers here. And soon I'm gonna get to where I wanted to go, the Helix Bridge. And uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. It's this 15 millimeter mounted onto the uh, Sony A6400. Um, Alright, so there's, there's an art science museum here. Yeah, it's actually a pretty small... It's, it looks big outside, but it's pretty small inside. And previously, I've jogged here once. It was great, but going back was pretty tiring. <laughs> I wanted to take a cab if I had the cash. I mean, I didn't bring any cash. I could have gotten into a car, but I ran all the way back, so... This is the Helix Bridge at night. And that's the financial... Uh, financial district, yeah. Okay. So, pretty few people here at night, on, Monday, on, on a Monday night, but it doesn't mean there are no people. I think most of those are out and about or couples or fitness focused like individuals. They're just running like I was. All right. So right here, I'm going to an observation area. Uh, there's uh, some kind of a National Day parade sometimes, and they have it here. With, obviously with COVID, you can't have thousands of people sitting over there close to each other, so that place has been cordoned off quite a, for quite a while right now. Yeah, so this is what it looks like at night. And I hope I'm not moving too fast. Even with the gimbal, if the movement is too fast, it may leave you sort of uh, disoriented and yeah, because this is a long lens. I mean, it's a very zoomed in lens. Uh, yeah, we'll see how the video turns out once I get home and I view it at a, at a computer. Those of you who are already looking at, it, at this on a PC monitor, you, you be the judge of how this footage looks like. Um, coming from the DJI Ronin SC. Mm. Mm. Okay. Actually, it's uh, kind of heavy with the feet mounted, but with the feet, it gives it an extra grip, so I find myself using two arms to hold it instead of one. Yeah, two hands, I mean. Oh, so a lot of cyclists. A lot of cyclists here. <coughs> There's very few people hanging out right now. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, well, yeah, I'm always interested to know what you think about this. You know, your con your comments, your questions. Uh, How does it work for me? For me, this is way, way better than the uh, Zhiyun Crane M2 I got two years back. It's way better because that Crane M2 is not suitable for the A6000 series and even a small lens. Because even if you have a, if you have an RX100 or a smartphone, it's better. But if you have a smartphone, why would you even want to bother buying that Crane M2? Because a smartphone gimbal is 
way simpler and you don't have to mess around with balancing and stuff like that if if you if you get a dedicated smartphone gimbal but because they say it's a three in one it's supposed to balance the action cam and a, and a compact camera at the same time you're gonna have to deal with a lot of fiddling so yeah and the a6000 series cameras hit the upper weight limit of 720 grams I think it's like 1.5 pounds or something and yeah it is, it's not fun uh, for it was not fun for me to operate at all because uh, there wasn't enough clearance it was so so compact which was good but it wasn't very it wasn't a lot of clearance Oops. okay so here I am going to the Marina Bay Sands whereas for this one the DJI Ronin let's see there is a ton of clearance between the back of my camera and uh, the arm so I don't feel oh, some people skateboarding down there I don't know if see them but yeah skateboarders yeah cyclists and going to the entrance oh I need a break oh there's no access because of COVID they regulate it um okay so I gotta find a, an appropriate exit and Right where, right where I am, it's like you scan your, you scan your phone, and the phone has all your personal identifiers, so you're good to go. They were, the government records your entry. Yeah, and if you get in contact with a COVID person, and a, a suspected infection or a confirmed infection, they make you go into quarantine. It's been cut from 10 days to 14 days, so... Yeah, but actually most people are vaccinated here already, so... Um, in my mind, it's okay for vaccinated people to get infected because they can, as long as they mask up and then pass the virus on to others, they're at very low risk of, uh, uh, you know, getting seriously sick themselves. So here's the Art Science Museum. Yeah, and uh, you know what? Like, moving the, the gimbal of the joystick is so easy. Because it is a full-sized, a compact full-sized gimbal, it sticks out, like... The DJI, I mean the GNM Crane M2 had this recessed joystick that was pretty hard to, pretty hard to uh, control. Yeah, that's a LV building over there. Yeah, and you know what, I could go in right now. But uh, I just want to show you guys a little bit more about what you can, what is out here. And also you can see how smooth or unsmooth the video is uh, compared it'll be super shaky if I if I walk a bit handheld and later on I'm gonna do a super shaky test with this uh, shooting grip that's in my pocket handheld no stabilization and see how it turns out yeah but right now I'm approaching this lotus this pond filled with lotus leaves and uh, yeah, maybe I think I'm walking too fast. So you can see the reflections in the water. It's pretty cool. And there's a boutique. I can open a new restaurant here, or maybe it was an old one. I don't know. Sen of Japan. What does that mean? Yeah. Many banks. Many big banks are. Hanging out over there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all the stores are already closed. It is uh, close to 10 p.m. now. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop taking and right now. And uh, once I see some more interesting sites. I, or points of interest, I will continue. All right, just let me find my shooting grip. Oh wow, so I haven't been to this area in a really long time and well, there used to be a water show every night here. Um, I guess since COVID happened, they stopped it. So to avoid people from gathering, and what they did is that they posted all these <laughs> funny, funny looking uh, Oh no, cardboard cutouts of real people. I mean, 
cycling or old people walking. You can see them there. And yeah, but still there are like small groups gathering around. Which is fine. They're, yeah. But I'm just surprised they wanna I mean it's it's a very pretty sight, but it's it's not too cool out here at night. <laughs> yeah. So and there's a giant fountain there. Oops. Yeah. Um, people skateboarding. Yeah. So it became sort of, sort of like a stadium. I mean, where I go to run, uh, the stadium is also like this. Yeah. That's the Apple Store. It opened. I think pretty recently. It, it opened like like less than a year ago. So it's floating. Uh, I never, I've never been there because I don't have an Apple stuff. Yeah, oops, I almost walked on top of her. It's pretty hard to see. <laughs> uh, flattened against the floor. Uh, okay, better get in inside. I'm pretty hot right now. Yeah. So going into the building. I don't even know where the entrance is, if there is an entrance. Uh, no access, oh man. That says no access right there. Yeah, it's too bad. Okay, and all, all the exits are blocked. The exits and the entrances, so let me, let me see how oh, I can actually get back up there. Oops. All these people are a little bit dangerous, like they actually they like to do this kind of thing. Uh, yeah, they're jumping all over the place. They're jumping all jumping yeah, they're talking about jumping. Yeah. I don't know. They're trying to do tricks I guess. I'll stick to running. <laughs> mm. Okay. There's a place called Justin over here. And yeah, it's a place where many people in banks work. Right up there. Uh, still a couple of people drinking and having dinner. More cyclists. I wonder where they came from. Hmm. Hmm. Someone else running. Hmm. Okay, and that is the apple store. Wow, it looks amazing. There are like trees inside. And there are people looking at apples. Wow. Yeah, cool. Okay, let's, there's a bridge leading down there, so maybe I'll just go and see what the fuss is all about. Yeah, I mean, these products can be seen anywhere, it's just that the, uh, the layout that presented them in is pretty striking. Okay, I'm going to stop for now. I'm going to come back when there is something... Uh, oh wait, no. Oh, that's closed! It's, it's, it's late. So they closed it. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Let me move this. Okay. All right, so um, here I am inside. I'm pretty lucky to find the exit, the entrance, and uh, even the outside is uh, very pretty. It's very, very hot, so yeah, I had to, I had to come in and cool off for a while. You know what I mean if you live here, if you've been to Singapore, or if you have lived here, staying outside gets you sweating in no time. 
And while I like sweating while I'm in the gym or when I'm exercising, I'm just walking it, you know, and yeah. It is really empty here. Yeah. You can see this. Yeah. So once I can find a place to push my gimbal down, I can uh, take it off and use it as a shooting grip to see how this performs handheld without stabilization. And you can see for yourself whether or not the DJI Ronin SC gives you a good bang for your buck. Well, it does in my opinion. Yeah, for the same price as a Korean M2, even though it's a little bit bigger, it's way better. Yeah. And, oh yeah, there's an SC2 that came out last year. I actually didn't realize that. I bought this version before I even knew there was a successor. But that's fine, because what does a stabilizer do? It stabilizes, right? Um, that's all it does, and as long as it does what it's supposed to do, that's fine. My camera is definitely less than 2 kilos, but the Ronin SC2 is uh, a little bit more, like 50% more in price, and it can stabilize 50% more in weight, so it's like 3 kilos. Yeah, but I think about it, then again, I don't need 3 kilos, because my camera is under 2, so I'm not going to get the additional benefit. It's different for a different story for you if you're using heavy lenses or stuff. But for me, uh, I'm not. So I'm okay with this combo. Mm. Okay, I'm on the third floor now, and yeah, looking for somewhere to go. Hmm. I'll put this thing double down <laughs> for a while. Slippers. Uh, I'm walking pretty close to me. I can hear a slipper. So I was wondering, like, where are the slippers? Where are the slippers? Yeah. <laughs> you know, there was a canal there. It's like Venice. Um, it's like Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas. Still looking for yeah, a place. Oh, uh, this is the e entrance to Gardens by the Bay that I haven't been to in a long time as well. Gardens by the Bay. Uh, yeah, nice place to explore at this time because, well, even though all the stores are closed, you kind of get the whole place to yourself and a few other people. There it are the boats. I'm just going to turn this off for a second while I look for an appropriate place. Okay, so I haven't found a place to put my gimbal down, but here I'm at the end of Marina Bay Sands and there is some kind of fountain of light here. And when my kid is still in Singapore, I'd bring her here and she'd be... Uh, should be happy. I mean, a lot of kids like that. So what they do is that they go to the uh, skating rink down here. It's not really a skating rink, but it's a play play pen or something like that. And they just like watch the light move, watch a light show. Yeah. Now, obviously, now food court's closed and everyone's gone home which is a perfect time for me to film this. <laughs> I'm just going to walk one big round and go back. There are tables I could possibly use, but yeah, it's the area is cordoned off. So you can see the guy there. He's uh, cleaning up. It's a Hamley's toy store. Gucci's here.
pretty, huh? Yeah, I should probably take this at the wide angle lens. This is this is too zoomed in. show you in this segment. If you I didn't know this place, I'd be lost right now. It's a kind of a maze how big it is. Okay, so here I am in a very long, narrow hallway. And I think it's pretty good to use this lens right here because it just leads straight to the station. And it shows you, it just shows you like this uh, cube I'm in, uh, this cube, cuboid that I'm in. Um, strangely enough, there are a lot of bored people walking around. <laughs> yeah, I think people just met up here for, for the sights and then they're all going home. Mm. Yeah, I am so glad, by the way, I changed this camera setting response time. This Sony's software is not too great because out of the box the autofocus is very slow. It was so slow that people started noticing it in my previous videos and uh, they asked me you know what's going on. Actually the native the real autofocus speed is hidden in the menu so I had to go go inside and like toggle it and I finally realized oh this is what the camera is capable of. It's like they should just en enable it right out of the box, you know. I'm getting closer to the station, so this is where I'll be ending. Unfortunately, I didn't, oh, I didn't find a really like suitable area to sort of take, a, take out or reload my, cam my camera from my gimbal. So I'm just going to post a short handheld clip uh, just outside my home later so you can see what's going on, what the difference is. All right, signing off. Signing off for now. Hi guys, so I, um, <clears throat> this is Tyler here, Lockdown Tech Tours, and I am back. I am heading back home. This is what it's like to be shooting without the stabilizer, without the Ronin SC. I'm using the Sony shooting grip, the, don't ask me how to say it, the VB, VPT BT, BT. <laughs> is that how you say it? I don't know, but you can find the uh, link in the description. I'm holding it as stably as I can with one hand or sometimes two hands but it is a small grip it is very very compact and the best part of, about it is is that it is remote uh, but of course it's handheld so you know it's not as stable as a gimbal um, so I'm just going up the escalator this station's pretty empty because it's already 10 30 at night and uh, yeah you can see how it looks like. I, ha I need to go back and sort of edit the video and sort of show you what it looks like. But anyway, this is what it is. Uh, probably the buses have stopped by now. But I didn't. I didn't manage to take a car. Like as usual, all the blue cars, all the electric cars that are available for rent, get rented out of the city center, and they go. Uh, to go out to the outskirts of the island, yeah, at night. So, yeah, well, I'm, it's, it's possible for me to drive to a location. I often find myself taking public transportation back, which is just fine. It's good for walking. It's, I I try to keep up at least 10,000 steps a day. So, actually, making this YouTube video is a very good way for me to rack up my step count. Instead of like the running that I always do, like every day, you know, just walking and talking, walking and gunning up like this camera is also another form of good exercise and let me try it yourself if you're you know bored and stuck and tired of staying stuck at home and in the house so this is the street this is what it looks like 
you know, walking around can help. Um, yeah, I hope I'm not creeping out the person in front of me. But, uh, yep. As you can see, it, it's 50 millimeters. 50 millimeter lens, so there's no way, it's impossible for me to keep it stable uh, while I'm walking. Yeah, just not possible. But just to give you a slight flavor, I'm just gonna walk for another 30 seconds. Then I'm gonna turn this video off. And I'm just gonna jump right in front of my computer and edit the video and see how it looks like. Yep. And, yeah, it's uh, well, it's not, I'd say the area I live in is pretty central. Um, it takes only 15 minutes by car to get to downtown. Uh, but unfortunately, getting back from downtown, I need to walk a little bit um, just to get to, you know, my place. Okay, I'm at the crossroads here. So, obviously, you can see it's very shaky. <laughs> and it's even worse because of the long focal length. But I'm signing off for now. I'll uh, catch you when I'm back home. Okay, guys, I'm back. Just like I said, I'd be back. So, um, after watching the videos, the videos that I took, I realized two things. Number one, the 15 millimeter lens is not a very good lens for taking videos outdoors. <laughs> um, it is just too narrow. Okay, and the reason is that it's pretty simple because um, it tends to focus only on the thing that is closest to it or the thing that it feels it should focus. And so, yeah, this um, DJI Ronin SC, once it comes closer, it will focus right on it and my everything behind is blurred, including myself. So I'm removing this and now, you know, my face is clear. So that's the first thing I learned. The other thing is that the A6400 has a lot of rolling shutter. Well, partially, part of part of this, um, that was because of me. I moved the gimbal too quickly, and in any situation, but especially if you're, you know, trying to record in 50 millimeter, um, don't move it too quickly. So the gimbal is not able to compensate for that, and that's fine. That is not the gimbal's issue. That is my issue. And, um, yeah, with the rolling shutter, it's definitely a Sony issue, and I've seen that documented in many other YouTube videos. Uh, people will just hold the camera in front of them, and they would just move it, and there's a jello effect. So, that is, um, that's a known issue. Third is that the Ronin SC is really good for stabilizing stuff. So, I can't wait to try it with my wide-angle lens, the lens I should have used but didn't. I just wanted to try this one out. Um, yeah, and see how it went. So for the most part, if I held it straight and steady, and it was not moving, it was fine. So as long as I was walking straight, or I was walking backward, or walking sideways, but in a controlled movement, that's fine. But the moment I turned it, I have to be very, very careful when turning it, because sometimes when watching my own, my own videos, like, looking back at it, I kind of felt nauseated, because yeah, partly it was a rolling shutter, but partly it's because I needed to move much more slowly in order to uh, take usable video. So, for those of you who, who felt like throwing up, I'm sorry. I, I felt the same way too. And I hope you skip through those parts. Um, but I just wanted to, I'm, I'm presenting them unedited to you. I mean, I'm editing only very minimal parts out just to show you how it looks like. And I hope you skip the parts that were irrelevant to you. So that's it for my review of the DJI Ronin SC. Um, I definitely can't wait to try it in other situations, but on a Monday night, I think this is uh, this is pretty good use of the two or three hours I got. So uh, if this video helped you, please um, you know give it a like. If you, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And I always welcome your comments or suggestions. Um, please give me your suggestions because it helps me you know, improve and it helps me think of other angles um, to look at the things that I do look at. Thanks again, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.